Ouch. Looks like the dog has a pretty gnarly bite. Look at all the blood spewing out onto the ground. We've shown the blood here to help you remember that pastorella grows on 5% blood agar. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we covered in more detail in section 9, which is our video on Viridans streptococci. There are various types of hemolysis that can be seen on blood agar. However, pastorella doesn't produce hemolysis on blood agar. It just grows on it. So technically, it's gamma hemolytic, which you can see right here. But again, it's most high yield to just know that it grows on 5% sheep blood agar. We can clearly see the dog biting the poor pastor's leg, but he's also scuffed up his arm pretty bad. Notice that the pastor is looking at his arm in horror. This wound on his arm should help you remember that pastorella is associated with animal bites and skin infections. I'm sure that if this pastor guy knew what was going on over by the Eiffel Tower, he would try to help, but obviously he's a bit occupied with the dog and the wounds on his arm and his leg. Okay, now notice that the cat doesn't seem too interested in the dog because it's quite preoccupied with a tasty fish it just caught out of the nearby river. All we can see now are leftover bones and scales. We've used bones and scales in our other images to represent osteomyelitis, so we've included it in this image to help you remember that pastorella causes osteomyelitis. Finally, notice that we've shown a girl sitting on the bench who appears to be intensely reading a Bible. She's so focused on reading that she doesn't notice anything around her, not the pastor guy getting bit by the dog or the granny being held by the joker guy. However, she is kind enough to tip the pastor with a single penny. The penny is here to help you remember that pastorella is treated with penicillin. 